Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. We're at Adam Booth's gym here in Surrey. I don't know whether to disclose where you are because it might be like a, a massive secret. Okay. I'm to, uh, um, today, today I'm going to try and figure out why we are so weird. This is not the day for that, trust me, because you're going to get nothing for me in that respect. No, you're not on the camera. It's me. Why do you make me weird? That's what I want to know. We could just... It started deliberately back in the day, but now I just I don't know how to behave with you. Keep an eye on this camera because you're now your head. You've got lower. You've hundred percent gone lower. Well, hold on, hold on. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Right, let's roll into it. Um, very busy gym here. Uh, everyone's got fights coming up within the next sort of ten weeks, I should think. Um, let's start with Harlem Eubank, who's in action in a very, very good fight against Danny Darko. Um, talk to me about this. Well, it's a, it is a. Um for a boxing fan, it's a great matchup because you've got two unbeaten, young, fresh, talented fighters that both are there to win, believe they can win, and both have excellent skill sets as well and excellent attributes in terms of hand speed, strength, decent punch power, boxing brains. It's so it's 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 fights like this that we're in the sport for, um, and we're looking forward to it. Why don't we get enough of these fights? I was talking to Harlem about it earlier on. There are more, but there's not enough of these 10 and 0 versus 6 and 0. And he's kind of at that experience wise, just putting them in together. There are fights that happen like this, but not enough of them. Yeah, because they're risks, aren't they? You know, like, although unbeaten records um, shouldn't be protected, sometimes people, you know, whether it's the promoters or the managers or the fighters themselves, they don't want to take risks too early on until they're until their paycheck is a little bit higher. You know, it's risk over gain. But we're in, you know, we're in changed times. There's no doubt about that. The pond is small. And there's a lot of fighters now who are prepared to step up and take these competitive fights because if they don't, someone else will. And they're the fights that the promoters are going to are gonna match. But the reason why Harlem's in this fight is that at his age and the stage he's at with his development now, this is the fight he needs. It really is. And I would imagine it's the same for Danny Egbenuki as well, because now they have to try and make their mark and stake their claim. Um, Josh Kelly will be in action possibly the 23rd or the 30th of January. Uh, am I right in saying that that's the case? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still waiting for the formal date, but I was, um, I'm led to believe it's the end of January. Okay, so that could either feature on the, the card as the same as Povetkin and White or a card that headlines its own show. I'd imagine so, yeah. I guess, I mean, yesterday's news that we can have 2,000 indoors for fights now may, may change it a little bit, but we'll see. But at the end of the day, I only care about the fight and, and where it is and what show it's on, it doesn't matter. Obviously yourself and Josh focused solely on David Evanesian, nothing else really matters, but I will ask you uh, a reaction to Conor Ben's win from the weekend and also that possibility for 2021. Well, I mean, in terms of his win, it was, a, it was a great fight for him to take because it was a progressive fight in a sense that he's fighting a dude that's not hard to get rid of. In fact, you know, you can't get rid of him. And the Sean Porter fight showed that. So it meant that Conor had to do some different things in terms of controlling his energy, pacing himself uh, and how he went about it. And I thought it was, a, it was an excellent fight for him and, a, and a, an excellent performance for him as well. In terms of, like in, I said on Saturday, in terms of talking, talking about it in, in our little zone, it's irrelevant because my, my belief is that Josh has got a much sterner, more serious challenge in David Evanesian, and that's and that's what we're that's what we are solely focused on. But of course, we're happy to talk about Connor and praise him. And if it's a fight that happens, it's a fight that happens. You know, I've learned over the years to never say never to anything in this. When um, 
I remember being at the York Hall with David Hay, and I think Hay was either going to become world champion, he was European champion, or he just won the world title. I don't, I don't remember exactly what it was, when it was, but he and I were standing on the top floor of the York Hall, and this dude comes up and starts talking to us, saying about how he's just won the, like he'd won the London's ABAs or something like that, and how he wanted to come and work with us, and he was going to come work with us. And David and I were like, yeah, yeah, all right, mate, yeah, just chatted to him, and off he went. That was Derek. So I've learned never to say never. So, but we are hopeful that uh, should Josh come for his fight with David I'm next year? I'm not going to answer that question because it would be foolish, ignorant and uh, inexperienced of me to do so. There is only one fight that Josh Kelly has and that's David Avanesian. Everything else is hot air and pipe dreams until this one is done. Okay. Fair enough. Um, let's talk about the girls. Um, Shannon Courtney in action next Friday, and you're still awaiting a date for Ellie Scottonay. Yes. <laughs> um, so, Shannon's first fight after her close fight with Rachel Ball. Don't know who it is yet, still waiting for the opponent. And then deal with that, and then we'll see what's next. And Ellie. Just waiting for a date. I think there's a lot. Yeah, I think there's a lot of fighters now converging, uh, wanting dates, and Eddie's one of them. And as each day goes by, she'll she'll start pestering Eddie more and more with text messages. There's a lot of fighters do, and they have to do. Squeaky wheel gets the oil. Um, I want to talk about a lot of boxing on. Say a lot of boxing. There's one main fight in particular on this weekend in uh, Daniel Dubois and someone you know very well in Joe Joyce as well. Obviously spent. Uh, some time with Joe, so yeah, how do you see this fight is going to fare this weekend? It's an immense fight, I mean it really is, it, for Joe at his age and with his background as an amateur and what he achieved, it's definitely a fight that he has to have now and for Dubois, it's a risk that they're taking that obviously proves the confidence that they've got in him and it is, a, I mean it is a genuine 50-50 pick and fight, I think that Joe, for me, is the favourite. He's more effective at boxing than people think, and they don't just give out Olympic silver medalists to no one. And I actually thought he beat Tony Yoka in that Olympic final as well. Um, if I'm right, it was Yoka he boxed in the final, wasn't it? Yoka. Um, I thought he won that. So he has a boxing brain when he wants to use it, and I think this fight he's going to be forced to use it, and I, and I can imagine him doing so. He's actually, when he chooses to be, He's not easy to hit. It's just when, he, when he's not thinking about defence that he can look more easy to hit um, than he should be. But I think he knows the risk that's in front of him. They've sparred. He, I, from when I spoke to him about the fight before, he's realistic about it. And, 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 I, and I've seen Joe uh, and what he's like when, when it's put on him and what he's like under pressure. I've seen his true character come out. And, no, and I know how heavy-handed he is as well. And I think those elements with that immense amateur experience he's got, I edge towards Joe. Okay. Uh, quite confidently put there. <laughs> Talking. Um, what is your thoughts about... What is, what is your thoughts? You're going, what are my thoughts? What is your thoughts about the government's decision not to include boxing in their 300 million pound winter survival package well, i don't I, I i wonder in in a few years in years to come whether future generations look back and in dismay that we actually had governments ruling us in these times um, i don't believe in government i don't like government and that decision just galvanizes my belief it's dis I think it's disgusting. It's disrespectful. I don't think it's. I don't think it's in tune with what people like as a sport. It's not in tune for what boxing does for society. In terms of the the age age old story, that there are so many individuals over the years that could take the wrong path in life and become a problem and menaces to society but through boxing and other forms of martial arts and combat sports, find the dis discipline and respect for themselves 
that feeds into discipline of others, that means they don't become menaces to society. And I think the government's decision is just total ignorance, the type of ignorance you would expect from professional politicians. Eddie Hearn wrote an open letter to various uh, MPs, etc., yesterday to attempt to get the ball rolling by almost saying, come and talk to us about it, because outlining certain of the issues now, who, that you're who, talking about. Who was the MP? Was it his local MP or was it the sports minister? Do you know what? I'll be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know which MP it was. I don't even know who the sports minister is. Like, you've got these administrators that get flipped into these different roles. I don't know who the sports minister is, but maybe it's the sports minister that could answer questions once they stop um, manipulating us with the whole COVID situation. But do you feel like the only way of getting them to take any notice of, it's great to write an open letter, but obviously action needs to be taken, so that's obviously a first step, but by applying pressure in, in that kind of way, via social media or whatever way is the only way they're actually going to take any notice. Well, social media, yes, I mean, it's a bit of a weapon, but maybe something a bit more cohesive, maybe the, the TV executives and you know, director generals or, or, or people in high positions in these broadcast entities could also support us and maybe, you know, maybe Eddie and Frank and, and whoever can try and have a, a bit more of a cohesive appearance. We know the, the BBC's attitude towards boxing and professional boxing and how dismissive the state's TV channel is towards it. And I guess the, the, the government's view is just kind of reflects the BBC's opinion of it, which again is out of touch with the, the, the reality of what, what the popularity of boxing is as a sport. So it's disgusting, it's frustrating. Don't expect, don't expect anything from the government, but it would be nice if somehow we could cohesively get together with some individuals who actually can have influence and see if, see if they can redress it because there's been no amateur boxing. I mean, it's, it's, the, whole, the, whole, the whole thing's been disrupted. If you look at the sports that have been funded and how much funding they're getting, that, let, that just lets you know that we're considered not even second best. I suppose the question is, if some money was allocated, where on earth does it actually go? Well, the, so there's the Sport England and the Lottery Fund, right? And that helps the, the amateur scene. And I guess we haven't heard about that package yet. And it'll be interesting to see what's going to come from that. But it should. I think when you're looking at investing, you've got to invest in the youth. In terms of the established pros and what people are seeing for boxing now, the main events, the Sky shows, the BT Sports shows, the MTK shows, that's, that's all well and good, top rank. But that's not where the problem is. The problem is that the vast majority of fighters have had to down tools and effectively half quit because there's no non-TV shows because there's no ticket sales. There's no amateur boxing because it's called grassroots and it's not allowed. And, and I don't think it would take a lot, but there needs to be, I think it would be nice to see a little bit, a little financial package to help sort of, you know, fire start it a little bit, if that. But, it, but again, like, pissing and moaning on an interview with you isn't going to change it. The only thing that's going to change it if there is a cohesive enough assault on these professional politicians to try and get them to, to realise that we could be a squeaky wheel. Mr. Postman. <laughs> Get on with it. Mr. Post. Good, good song this is. Um, <clears throat> so, the money is needed for amateur boxing, and you're saying, which is right, when it's not televised shows, the small hall shows, that level of boxing, it's needed for that. Well, I'd like to see the Amateur Boxing Association get, the, the amateur organisations get some funding for the non-elite sport. I'd like to see the British Boxing Board of Control get some funding for the non-TV promoters and, and, and the small hall fighters. Because the elite amateurs are gonna be okay. And the ones that are fortunate enough to be on the main boxing platforms like Matram, Top Rank, uh, Frank Warren, MT, MTK to a certain extent as well. 
they're, they're going to be okay. It's what's feeding into it. And that's where I'd like to see it go. Okay. Um, don't worry, I'm going to ask how you are at the end. <laughs> We're clearly not okay, but I'm saying... No, I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, you're a good reader of minds, aren't you? You like to kind of look at people and break them down psychologically and mentally and what is he thinking and what is that person doing and, you know, really get to the ooh of it. Yeah. Where are we going? Yeah. You're leading me on to something. Where are we going? No, I'm not. I'm not. What, in your opinion, is going on with Deontay Wilder? That was my question. If you were to read what you're seeing unfold over the last month especially, or really since the Fury fight, but especially over the last month or so, what are you seeing unfolding regarding Deontay Wilder? I don't know. I think whatever it is is deliberate. I don't, I don't think it's as hot-headed or wayward or as emotional as it's probably coming across. Um, I'm, you know, I know Deontay and I know what he's like as a man and, and what he is as a family man. So what you see in terms of the public persona of somebody and what you see when they're actually them true selves in a private setting can be two totally different things. And that's what I see with Deontay. So when I, when I, and I haven't seen too much of it, if I'm honest, but what I've seen just to me comes across as a, a professional approach towards something. There's a strategy going on for whatever reason, you know, um, his promotional organization, whatever, whatever it is, they're doing it for a reason. I don't know what that reason is, but I don't, I don't, I, because I know Deontay, I don't gauge him on that because I know what he's like as a man. So the stuff he's been saying over the last few weeks, I'm not saying you disagree or agree with it. You don't think... Yeah, it, um, the gloves, the water being spiked, all those comments he's made recently in an interview. Why not? No. I know Sugar Hill. I know Andy Lee. I don't really know Tyson, but I know Andy Lee very well. Um, and I know he didn't, and he didn't do any of those things that he's talking about. So there has to be a reason why he's saying it. I don't think those reasons are because he truly believes it happened, but wherever they are, they are. Or maybe he does truly believe they happened. Uh, everything I've seen doesn't make sense to me. In terms of his accusations. There's that nonsense about the glove being pulled off his... Listen, I'd much rather get hit in the face by a boxing glove that's got no fist in it rather than one that has got a fist in it. I don't see, it's actually, a, it's actually beneficial for a fighter to get hit with a glove that's got no hand in it. I don't see, I don't see where, the, where the, the relevance of that claim is. Maybe another question you can answer. Um, he said that the inside of his ear was scratched with Fury's fingernail. How's, how would you say that that was possible to happen? We, got, we could have more serious questions than that. No, I'm just, I'm genuinely, I'm just wondering what, how, how that even is possible. That's... I don't know. Um, look at the shape of him, he's getting there, isn't he? Yeah, long road. A long road to being a world champion. But he's on the road. Oh, he's, in, he's in a really good, he's in a really good mindset, yeah. Um... 12th of December, we have Joshua Pulev, which hopefully some fans can attend that after yesterday's announcement. But any potential banana skins there for Anthony Joshua? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I know that Pulev is probably past his prime in terms of age and, and physical prowess, but look at the people he's lost to, right? They're, they're, they're elite level, and he can whack with that right hand hard, and he's got. He's got a nasty um, finishing streak in him as well. So, of course, it's heavyweight boxing. And if, if AJ was to take it lightly or even take it seriously and make, make the wrong choice at the wrong time, he could pay the ultimate price for it because Pulev can whack. That's in a couple of weeks. Who, in your, in your opinion, rather, is pound for pound best fighter in the world right now, today? It's a hard one because I'd like to say Terence Crawford, 
but he doesn't have the body of work yet because he hasn't had the opponent step up for the fight. When you look at who Alvarez has beaten, you have to favour Alvarez because of his body of work. Well, for me, he does anyway, because of you know the fighters that he's beaten and, and how he's done it as well. OK, um, I've got to ask you, how are you? Because you're not been too well lately, have you? No, you're, I mean, like, physically. Bionic man, I'm bionic man. But how are you? Because that, whatever you had done looks horrendous. That's right, it was, a, it was a knee replacement, but it was only 12 days ago, and I'm almost walking properly now, so I'm all right. I'm all right, but thank you for your concern, Governor. I did text you as soon as I see it, and you kept me hanging for, like, four days. I was off my nut on morphine, that's why. <laughs> What, just in general or that time in particular? That time, on that time in particular. But if you want, I've got a couple of bottles if you want to buy one off me. No, definitely not. I've never Why had Wolfin. Why are you winking at me? Oh, sorry, yeah. Right. Lies. Yeah, so there's those two events on uh, BT Sport this weekend. One's on Box Office and obviously Joyce Dubois is free to air. We love a free to air show. Yes, we do. Big kudos to BT Sport and Frank for that one. Indeed. Right, I'm going to let you get on. I'm going to interview Ellie Scottney wherever she's at. She's still here. And uh, have you got any closing words before we finish? How are you? How are you? How's life? I'm great, yeah. How's I'm great. Life? How's your life changed recently? My life's changed because I'm slowly um, moving nearer to the realisation that it's not always going to be about me now. You're growing up? I'm, in the, I'm in the process. Make a suggestion. Why don't you and I do a one-off where I interview you about you and about your journey to where you're at at the moment because you've achieved a certain status, right, in what you do. Uh, and my, my thing is, if you're going to do something, be the best you can be at it. And you certainly strive to do that. So why don't I do an interview with you? If anyone, if anyone wants that, then I'll, I'll do it. I'll come up with some good questions. Possibly. Possibly. If I, if I was to let anyone do that, I think it would be you, yes. Well, then do, let's do it. Well, let me take a picture of it. Adam Booth, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. TV and uh, best of luck in your recovery and best of luck with all your fighters and their upcoming fights, but I'm sure we'll see you at most of them. That's fun. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt.